Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I'm building an old town hall for the bottom of High Street on my N-gauge model railway layout. I've added the main walls to the building as well as the dentilated cornice around the top of the walls. As ever, I've used hand-cut card for this rather intricate bit of detail, so let's dive straight in and see how I went about it. The wall to the left of the tower is a mirror image of the one on the right, although I can make it lower and include a cellar as I have more baseboard depth at that side. The middle of the three bays is recessed slightly, so I need to think of this in layers. As usual, I drew the outline of the building in the free drawing application Inkscape. All of the parts fit onto one A4 sticky label, which I stuck to half millimetre card. I chose half millimetre rather than the more sturdy one millimetre, as I do not want the windows to be recessed too far into the walls. The rather fancy windows will eventually have deep stone casings already, and I didn't want to make them even deeper. I cut this all out as a series of rectangles first. This makes it easier to cut the windows with their curved tops as the pieces are easier to rotate. I find the best cut is got by keeping the knife straight and rotating the card rather than the other way around. Even with the thin card and sharp blade, a few light strokes rather than one big heavy one ensures the crispest and most accurate line. With the curve cut, the straight parts are then done with the steel rule. It is very satisfying to pick out the waste card with the tip of the scalpel. So here is a kit of parts that represent the walls. The main faces are on thin half millimetre card. And to make the walls more solid, I also cut supporting elements from one millimetre card, so the resulting walls will be one and a half millimetres thick. Well, I find that with the card and labels that I use, a stack of one half millimetre and one one millimetre card actually comes out at 1.9 millimetres so it's more like two millimetres. Why not work out the dimensions of your own materials like this? It makes drawing accurate joins in Inkscape so much easier if you know the actual widths of the materials that you're using. I used simple PVA glue to laminate the parts together. And I ended up with a kit of sturdy parts which will go together something like this. I cut these strips to add more depth, but I ended up pulling them off again when I looked at the pictures of the Sorby Bridge prototype I decided I didn't need them. No matter how close you think you are, always keep referring to the source to correct any accidental deviations like this. I used Scale Scene's dressed stone texture for the walls. The left part of the town hall is going to be a really awful nightclub, possibly called Rumours or Heaven or something like that. I used a couple of blended black rectangles in Inkscape to create the black painted walls. I added guidelines to help me score the edges to get crisp folds where needed. Pre-scoring along the back of the print is a really good way to get crisp edges on parts like this. I used PVA to add the texture to the base part, and then cut and folded the texture around the window apertures. I repeated for the outer bays, but left one flap of the texture free to wrap around the full depth of the wall later. The wall protrudes from the tower quite away, so I added another padding strip and then folded the flap around the whole thing. With Chandwell actually in operation, I turned my attention to the ground plan. I needed this to be as accurate as possible so that I could get the walls in the right place and have no trouble getting the roof right later on. I used a protractor to measure the angle of High Street and then printed the intended ground plan to basic copier paper. Once cut and placed on the layout, I wasn't very far off, but maybe the tower was too far up High Street. It took another couple of prints, but I ended up with the exact plan of the building's footprint and the shape of the pavement. And this will make the rest of the build so much easier. With the shape of the roof determined, I could turn my attention to the lovely cornice, complete with its row of many dentils. I printed my first attempts onto labels, and noticed that I'd got the material labels wrong, so I had to scribble over them with a pen. I cut the first part out, and immediately noticed that I had the walls the wrong shape as well. If this happens to you, don't throw away the unstuck labels. Just correct the drawing and reprint to the same label but in a different colour. The only challenge is not getting confused where the new colour overlaps the old one. It's better than throwing away the label though. So in Inkscape, I used the plan from earlier and expanded the shape along the front edges to make multiple shapes all a slightly different size. 
I use the pattern along path, path effects in Inkscape to add the dentils along the front edge and around the curve, the same way as I added the white lines to my road surface a few weeks ago. The challenge here is just one of time, there were a lot of little notches to cut out, 97 in total, and each one only 2mm wide by 1.6mm deep. It was just a case of chopping into the card with the tip of the scalpel blade, and then teasing the little bit of card out in a very satisfying way, especially when it pings across to the other side of the room. I was eventually left with a little stack of 5 bits of card, which would all go on top of each other like this. Their slightly differing sizes go together to make quite a convincing cornice. Once glued, the effect was noticeable, but despite my best efforts, they weren't stuck exactly centrally. The slip is only about half a millimetre, but it's very noticeable. I did my best to clean it up by trimming the edge slightly, and I think it'll be better still once I get the top of the tower on. Once painted with acrylic stone coloured paint, the error isn't as obvious, and the cornice really does look exactly like what I was intending. Time to get the tower on. I counted the dentils around the circular part of the roof, and marked the centre one with an arrow. This helped me get the tower into position with its window arranged centrally. The walls were next, lined up as best as I could by eye along the already correctly shaped cornice. It was then a case of dropping it onto the layout to see how it might look. I'm really excited about this build, I think it's going to look great. My last job was to print a bit of guttering edging to label and stick it to half millimetre card. This is only one and a quarter millimetres wide. I find that intricate parts like this are easiest to cut when printed as a solid shape rather than an outline. It keeps the width more consistent for some reason. I was left with an incredibly delicate piece of card, which I gently dropped into a bead of PVA glue along the top of the cornice, and I teased it into position with my crochet hook. The gutter is maybe wider than it should be, but the reason... So I just got part way of uploading this finished video to YouTube, and I've come back and I've looked at this faulty off-center bit of guttering, and I've decided that I just can't live with it. I tried pulling off the top offending piece, but um, this PVA glue is very strong and I made an absolute mess. So I ended up pulling off the whole roof, and I'm left with just the walls of the town hall. Uh, they've come off quite cleanly actually, with a little bit of cleaning up they should be fine. But I've decided to redo the entire roof, so that's more almost everything I've shown, just showing you in this video. Um, I'm going to print it this time with guidelines on the top, so instead of trying by eye to get them all piled up nicely, um, they'll help me arrange it better. Uh, I just couldn't manage to hide the fact that this was so off center. So anyway, that's what I'm doing now. So hopefully next week's video, you'll see if I'm successful with that. I still intend to do the windows. Um, so let me get this updated onto the video, upload it, still watch it. Um, and hopefully next time it will be better. Back to the video. The real building's cornice does seem to overhang by quite a way. So I don't think I'm that far off. I finished off by painting it stone colour and dry brushing the whole thing to add some colour variants. The techniques I used for the dentils and also for expanding the size of the roof for the cornice are exactly the same as those I used for my white lines and my pavements and my double yellow lines in my road video of a few months ago. Here's a look at that if you're interested. I'm moving on to the windows now, so please click that thumbs up if you've enjoyed this episode, and come back next week to see how the windows turn out. Until then then, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.